When it was first announced that Sucker Punch was going to be producing a sequel to Ghost of Tsushima called Ghost of Utah and we got the trailer for it, there was some criticism surrounding it online because of the direction that they're going to be taking it and replacing the lead character from the previous game with a new character. And then people started digging into the voice actors behind the new one and not really happy with the results of what they're seeing so far because she fits the hallmarks of a woke activist type. Uh, and I made a video at the time talking about it where I said, okay, this is some cause for concern, but that doesn't necessarily mean with 100% certainty that the game is going to be going in that direction because she is the voice actress for it. And I'm not necessarily trying to diminish that role in the final product, but her job is just to read the lines. She's not having a creative say in the game whatsoever in this. So, okay, if she's the best for the job, I think that's fine. Doesn't necessarily mean the game's going to be bad because Sucker Punch, I think, has built up a lot of goodwill with the previous game. But now we're starting to see some rumors that there might be some issues behind the scenes outside of just the voice actress. And there may be some other people working at the company that I think are also cause for concern. But let's dive into these rumors. This is being reported on from that park place. And I will make sure to emphasize these are rumors. So you have to take them with a pinch of salt. But there is some other stuff that we know with 100% certainty that I do think are also cause for concern. And I will address those in a moment. But first... Let's look at what they're saying about this. Sucker Punch gutted and repurposed Ghost of Tsushima sequel for Ghost of Yotai. A new rumor alleges that Sucker Punch Productions, the developer of Ghost of Tsushima and the upcoming Ghost of Yotai, gutted and repurposed the planned Ghost of Tsushima sequel and created Ghost of Yotai out of its bones. Now, that right there, I don't necessarily think is the worst thing imaginable. It's pretty common within the video game industry to start a project and take it in one direction, then you change your mind at some point in the production and you decide to take it in a different direction, but they don't just want to scrap all their files and then delete all of them and then never to be seen again. It's like, no, you're going to try to salvage whatever you can. So if they're trying to repurpose it and take it in a different direction, I think that's okay. But take a look at this next part right here. So these rumors come from YouTuber Endymion, and this is what he said about it, saying basically Sony Japan was upset about being kept in the dark about the changes in the game and quote, it does seem there is a huge disconnect between what Sucker Punch knew about this Ghost sequel versus what Sony's PR teams knew. And the reason why I think this is a big deal if it turns out these rumors are true is because one of the things I said in my previous video about the announcement for Ghost of Yotai is that Sucker Punch carries a lot of goodwill. The first game was very popular in Japan. They liked what they were doing with it. So I'm thinking like, okay, if the Japanese like the characterization of it and Sucker Punch is still working on the sequel, then Maybe we can give them the benefit of the doubt, even if uh, me personally, I'm a little bit cautious and I think there's some red flags involved with it. But if it turns out the Japanese actually don't like the direction that they're taking the sequel, then I think there is more cause for concern. So supposedly this is what Endymion actually said when it comes to the sequel and what they're repurposing. So it was initially supposed to follow the events of the first game. I mean, the sequel is, but it was supposed to also follow Jin Sakai. He was uh, return uh, this time he's a ronin he's around the mount yotai area which kind of corresponds with the continuity of the first game in the way that ended uh he was supposed to be around mount yotai and then the mongols attack there and then he kind of does this thing they decided to scrap that idea and replace him with the female lead now a new character and uh that right there like i said isn't necessarily a deal breaker for me but when you start looking to, into some of the people that has since been hired on to work in the creative roles at sucker punch well, then I think that is a little bit cause for concern when you start looking into some of these people. Uh, uh, first, he pointed out that Jen Lee Lukin, who began work at Sucker Punch in March 2022 as a producer, uh, senior writer and narrative designer for Sucker Punch, uh, Ad uh, Ad uh, what is it, Ariadne uh, Martinez, uh, began working in May 2023. He also pointed to Courtney Woods, who joined Sucker Punch as a senior staff writer in September 2022. Finally, he pointed to Kelly Snyder, who became a senior producer at Sucker Punch in September 2023. And when I read those names in the article, I started looking up some of those people just to kind of get an idea of who they are and what they're about because I wasn't super familiar with them. I didn't find a whole lot, mostly just their LinkedIn profiles. And you couldn't really see a whole lot from that other than the fact that they had their pronouns in that. Kelly Snyder here, this is the only one I was able to find her uh, X account. You can see the bio here says senior producer at sucker punch so that's confirmed in the article she they pronouns rainbow flag here and i believe that's the lesbian flag in the background of her profile picture 
And one of the things I said about uh, Erica Ishii when uh, she was the cast as the voice actress for the lead character is that she doesn't have any creative say in the game. But in my previous video, I was mentioning how it does indicate that Sucker Punch is comfortable hiring someone like this who would kind of fit the definition or fit the stereotype of a woke person. And when you have people like that working at the company in a creative role, they might be trying to push the final product in that direction. And if that's the case, then that's not really a good sign for the final result. It even says right here, given when these individuals joined the company and Demion stated, as you'll notice, as I showed these other examples, these writers and such, they all came onto the project rather late in production on Yotai, almost as if the game was something else entirely before it became Yotai. And I think that is some cause for concern with this because we know for a fact that these people are working on the project. They uh, started uh, some time after the production of the project began. So if they did come on the project and these rumors are true that it was supposed to be Jin Sakai from the start and then they pushed it in a different direction, it does look like that these people who do have pronouns in their bios are pushing it in a different direction that has a female lead character now. And if that's the case, it does suggest that they are trying to push the game in a woke agenda, or at the very least, they're trying to use the game to try to push their own personal beliefs. And if that's the case, that's not necessarily a good sign. Now, I will say again, I'm not saying with 100% certainty, this means the game is going in a woke direction, but there are some things that are starting to stack up or at least evidence against it that suggests that that's actually what's going on here, even though we can't really confirm anything until we see more at this point. On top of all this information, and Demion also shared that Sony is currently deciding what to price Yotai at and how to promote the game going forward. As I was told, currently Yotai is being considered at Sony to be pushed as a spin-off title in the Ghost series instead of a mainline game. This was not the original plan, as I've been told, however. The game was meant to be the next de facto installment and the direction Sucker Punch was going to take this game series. He goes on to talk about other rumors about how they might actually make this not at full retail price, but make it at a cheaper price. The map might be smaller than the previous game. They're going to make it cross platform, all that other stuff. I'm not going to dive into it right now for this video. I'll leave a link to this article in the description of the video, though, if you want to check it out yourself. I'm mostly just commenting on the rumors in regards to the creative direction that this game is taking, because we know for a fact that these new people came onto the project uh, somewhere during the middle of the project. And they kind of oh, fit the stereotype of a woke activist. I'm not saying that's what they're doing, but they do fit that stereotype right there. And they've also came out somewhere in the middle of the project. And according to the rumors, it was initially supposed to be Jin Sakai. Then after these people came on board, then it became a female character and they took it in a different direction. So make with that what you will when you compare what we know about this with what the rumors are. But one of the things I was saying about this game when uh, I first heard about the announcement is that we can give them some of the benefit of the doubt because Sucker Punch did a good job with the first game. But when you have a different creative team working on this new one versus the previous one, then does it really matter that it's the same studio? I don't think that's as much of an issue right there or as much of a factor. So you would have to basically just take this game at face value and forget what happened with the first one. So just because the first game was good doesn't necessarily mean this one's going to be good either because, like I said, it's a different creative team working on it. And according to these rumors, Sony Japan is actually pretty upset with the direction that they're taking this after they brought in this new team working on it. So I don't know. That's not necessarily a good sign. Uh, I can't really say with 100% certainty, obviously, whether this game is going to be good or bad or whether it's going to be woke or not because we haven't seen enough. The only thing we know now is that we actually have a female lead character and then some of the more public people working on this in a creative role actually do fit the stereotypes of a woke activist. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see when the final product comes out or when we get more information. Uh, I'd like to see a gameplay trailer, maybe more of a story trailer for this before I can say further what direction I think this game is going. But right now I would just say there's a number of red flags starting to pop up surrounding it. But let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below. And also, if you haven't already, make sure you click that subscribe button if you want to stay up to date with the latest entertainment news. And don't forget to click that like button and share this video out there because it really helps out with the channel. Thank you.